to find a patient, it's the same icon. It's this little guy with a little arrow. Or they're all linked. If I'm already looking in my family file, it'll take me to my chart. If I'm already looking at the appointment, my appointment, it'll take me to my ledger or my chart or my um, family information. So just keep that in mind. They're all linked together if you're working on the same person. Or if you need to find a new person, just use this little arrow. You'll notice these little icons and buttons keep following through in the whole program. I've got my medical alerts. I've got my patient alerts, which I said don't show me again, like pre-medicating and so on. Okay? So with that being said, let me do a little overview of what you get in a patient chart. First of all, you have the teeth. This is the graphic chart. This displays all the information regarding completed or treatment planned or existing work. You've got buttons here, a whole bunch of buttons. These are called procedure buttons. These can be customized so that every office can put in the button they like to use the most. In fact, you can make buttons just for hygienists. You can make buttons just for the assistant. Or you can do it if it's just being seen by children. So you can have different uh, sets of buttons and create your own. Over here, you've got the procedure categories and codes. Now, down below here where it says progress notes, you'll notice there's a few tabs. The very, very bottom, you've got progress notes. This will keep track of any treatment or treatment plan posted. Clinical notes, we're going to teach you how to do that because it's very important that the assistants know how to put clinical notes in. I would say in most cases, it's the assistant who puts the notes in, the doctor verifies them, or makes changes and additions. If they're going to have digital x-rays, uh, there'll be a third tab that says images. We won't be going into that today. You'll also notice there's tabs to the side. If I hover over this treatment planner, there's these little push pins, little push pin. If I push the pin, this is my treatment planner. When I have finished post slides to the side. Also, for your, for your information, let's look at like procedure buttons. If you're talking to a patient and they don't want to see all this stuff written around here, I can do my push pins. I'm going to hover over here. I'm going to do my uh, procedure code push pin. So it's just keeping it in a tab to the side. That's all. For today, I'm going to keep my buttons and my procedure codes. It's literally a push pin. We'll bring the treatment planner over in just a little bit. There's a lot of buttons up here that have to do on this toolbar with just this particular area. This little button is something you can use to change primary and permanent teeth. So if you're seeing a child, you can select the teeth that are for children and make those changes. This little perio probe is where you'll do perio charting. We've got a treatment planner. This is uh, a chair. We're going to talk about that once we actually post treatment. Anyway, these are a few things we're going to be looking at today. Over to the right, this right toolbar is how we post the treatment. Was it completed? Is it treatment planned? Is it existing or existing other? I get this asked all the time. What's the difference between existing and existing other? If the patient went to another provider before they ever saw you and had fillings done, that's existing other from another provider. Existing would be perhaps they were born without wisdom teeth. Or I have a son. Let's see. I have a son who wasn't born with uh, some of his permanent teeth. <laughs> so these would be baby teeth, and that would be existing that the permanent teeth are not there. Let's see. I know someone says they've raised their hand. Do you, are you all connected? Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. I'm not sure what they're asking here. I'll let uh, Steve take care of that. Okay, so we can carry on. 
All right, looking at the chart. Pull this back up. Okay. We are going to use me. I am going to be the guinea pig, and I want to teach you how you're going to be charting. This is critical. This matters. This is exactly how you will do it. First thing, because we have these buttons, and they're already in place, we're going to use the ones they have available. Very simply, though, if I want to change or add buttons, there's this little key that says Setup. I select, I select Setup and Procedure Buttons. Can you see here how I have some defaulted buttons that are just coming here generically? You can add new buttons or remove buttons, or you can name the buttons so that maybe it's just the hygiene buttons. That's all that this is. I am actually going to add in another button because I want to put a post and build up in here. I press New. So it says procedure code. I actually have to locate it in the data. That's restorative, and all of you know it's D2950 or 54, right? All of you know that. There we go. I get to choose a picture for my buttons. Choose an image. Now, this is a post and build up. I'm going to use this little picture. Looks like a little post or a pin or something. And just press OK. Now, here it is at the bottom. I have my post. This particular code, I can move up. Now, I know you're looking at the screen, but if you look at, oh, it's taking a minute. Right, this is having a little, my system is having a little issue. Anyway, you should be able to move the buttons where you want them to be in your selection. That's all. Not a worry. All right. Here's our buttons. Here's our procedure codes. Every procedure code that the ADA allows is in here, so you should be able to find it. There are several ways to post treatment. Several. All right. If I could see you, I'd say, raise your hands if you know the ADA codes. Well, there's some of us. Many don't. In fact, a lot of assistants don't. I, I really think they should learn them. But you can post treatment three ways. There's this little empty box. I can actually put in a code in this box or push a button or find it in the list. So we're going to do some of each. There is a light switch. This is something I think the assistants will need to know. It says auto state. It's a light switch. If I push the auto button, it pops it out, puts a little box around it, and now I can, it will automatically post a treatment plan or existing treatment. We're going to do existing treatment first because you're going to have a patient come in and they have lots of old amalgam fillings. So, first, the good news is, let's just choose a few teeth that have old amalgam fillings. I simply highlight them. I very simply highlight them. It knows it's going to be existing other because I have my light switch on, my auto state. I can post it several ways. Number one, I am going to use my buttons which are the easiest, going to love it. Can you see clearly it says one surface? Guess what? In our program, we can put whatever surfaces and it will be billed correctly and coded correctly. This is a D2140. It's asking me tooth number two. What amalgam surface is there? I'm going to say M-O-D. Okay. It's asking me tooth number three. What are the surfaces? Occlusal. Okay. Tooth number 15. M-O-D-B-L. Okay. Tooth number 19. We'll do M-O-D. Tooth number 30. We'll do that as a, an occlusal. Okay. 
The good news with Dentrix is I can select multiple teeth for fillings and put the correct surfaces on that tooth. They don't all have to be the same. It asks me tooth by tooth what that is. All right. Guess what? I'm going to tell you I was never born with wisdom teeth. Not really, but just for this. So that was existing. I'm going to choose my existing button. I'm just going to have them re removed. They were existing, but they were never there. There's different ways to do that. But I did that on purpose, just so you can see that as we're doing this, down below in my notes, in green, I've got existing other. In blue, I've got existing. All right? It's really convenient to have this little light switch on. Now we're going to treatment plan. This is the big one. So they've seen the patient. And, and I always recommend, when I do a training, and I think you should do this with their assistants, if you have x-rays or let them take have x-rays of themselves, make them a chart. And they have to chart the existing fillings that are in their mouth. Or if they have an existing root canal or a crown, to have them learn it while you're looking at x-rays and charting it. Anyway, just a suggestion. All right. Treatment plan. Here we go. Oh, Lisa, I haven't been in for years and years and years. So the doctor's taking a look and says, oh, okay, you know what? You need crowns done. I'm sorry, you're going to need to have all of these crowns done. Now I'm treatment planning. So I have selected my treatment button because my light switch is on. If the light switch is off. See, it's off. I selected my teeth. I select my crown. Blink. It's saying, okay, now what? Okay, you want crowns? There's the code. What do you want me to do with them? Then I choose the treatment button. It's a whole lot of extra steps. Please, please, please remind them if the if they're treatment planning quite a bit, turn the auto state on or the light switch and select whatever they're charting. If it's treatment plan, make sure that's highlighted. Okay, with that being said, we've got more treatment to do. First of all, I'm kind of talking to the doctor and I've been wearing down these lower anterior teeth because I'm kind of grinding a little bit and they kind of need that little incisal filling. So we're just going to take, let's see, here we go. All right. So that's something that, you know, is kind of cosmetic, something I kind of want to do. They're kind of worn down. It's still a treatment plan. All of these need an incisal filling done. But I want them in composite. I want them pretty and white. Because my light switches on treatment, I select my resin filling. It's asking me 222. It's an incisal, but guess what? All of them are incisal. All of them. Boink. All right. It just populates immediately that they're all incisal because they're the same filling. I don't have to say what each tooth needs to have done. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is charting from the code list right over here. So I've come in now, and I said, you know what? Tooth number 19 is killing me. I, I, you know, the doctor says it's a root canal. All right, I'm going to choose tooth number 19. And I don't have a root canal button. I don't know where to find it. Procedure codes. I've got all of my categories here. I select endodontics. Chink. I'm going to scooch it a little so you can see here. Here's my options. Remember, root canal, no matter what tooth, it will give it the correct code for the tooth number it is. But these are a few. There's not that many. If I select more codes, it will show me all of them in the endodontic category. There we go. All right, so I'm going to come down to root canal on molar. No, that's a retreat. Ah, oh, no, 33. There we go, 30 for 30. 
I'm not having these done, by the way. I'm unclicking them. Okay, this tooth alone is having a root canal. I find the code and check it off. I'm going to post it to my treatment plan. Check. There's my root canal. Now I need a buildup and a crown. Number 19. Let's say I don't have my buttons here. I literally have to go find it in my codes. I'm going to do a 27. Well, I'll do this kind of buildup. I select it. I'll do a PFM. Okay, two things are selected for the same tooth. Check. Now I have a buildup and a crown. Obviously, buttons are easier. Buttons are faster. They're the way to go. But if you don't have your button set up with all the codes you typically use, you have all your category codes all here under procedure codes. They're all here. That's very simply how you can access. Well, there's one more thing. What if you can't find it or you can't? You can simply do this other thing. Who has it that says I knew ADA codes? Well, if I just need a crown on this, I can type it in. Okay? Three ways to post treatment. Procedure buttons procedure codes, and manually putting in the procedure code. Now, before everybody gets in a panic, I know your assistants will, if your light switch is on, you can't manually put it in. It's not here. The light switch or auto state must be off to manually enter a procedure code. That's one tip I want you to be aware of. Okay, so now we've put in treatment plan. Woo, what a mouth I have got. All right, this is something that really does happen in dental offices for real. Number 19, we've told the patient you need a root canal buildup and crown or an extraction and a bridge. I don't know which is the best option. If we can't save the tooth, it will have to be extracted and you'll need a bridge. Well, we need to chart that so the patient's aware of that. Tooth number 19, treatment plan is going to be an extraction. And it's going to be a bridge. I want you to realize that for some patients, it really is. You have option one or option two. All right, we have done a lot of treatment planning. A lot is charted. And, you know, I just won the lottery, and I think, you know what, while I'm here, let's get some veneers done. Let's just do it. Movie star teeth. It's optional. It's nothing I need to have done. I kind of think I might want to have it done. I'm just going to put it in here as a, a D, D, instead of the 62, I'm going to go ahead and treatment plan it as just Empress crowns. All right. There's a reason I've done this. You've had a patient in the chair. You've charted existing. You've charted existing other, no wisdom teeth. You've charted treatment that needs to be done. And you've charted option one and option two. And lastly, cosmetic purposes, veneers. Whew. Man, that's a lot, a lot of. I want you to recognize that as we've been charting down below, treatment land will post in red. You'll have existing in green. You'll have ex existing other, I'm sorry, in green, and existing in blue. When I'm talking to a patient or sitting in the chair, they will have a new toolbar down here. When you're looking at this toolbar here, I can choose what I want to see. I don't want to see the existing treatment today. I don't want to see anything completed. I am just viewing the treatment plan at the same time I can see the picture. That's all that means. If I don't want to see the treatment plan and just looking at completed work, that will be listed in here. So we're going to complete some work. 
Okay, boy, that's been a long time in the chair with a lot of treatment planned that I have to get done. And it just so happens that the doctor says, you know what, while you're here, I had a cancellation. We can do these little incisal ones. We can do these today. We can do number 20 through 20, I'm sorry, 22 through 27. I can do those. I can highlight. I'm using my shift key. I highlight the first one. I press shift, go to 27, or I can do them one at a time. These got done today. I can check it off in here. I don't need to check it from the appointment because I was already in the chair and I was back in the back room getting treatment. Check. Perfect. You will see on the teeth that I just got done, they're now painted in blue. They're written in blue down below. And let me put my ledger. Ta-da! They automatically post in my ledger that they have been completed today. Back to my chart. Obviously, the next step, you bill insurance, collect their payment, and so on. But this is exactly how you will chart. Now, this is lovely. This is going to be nice. This is going to be fabulous. It will color coordinate. And by the way, your students can decide what colors they want. It will auto default blue for completed, red for treatment plan, green for existing other. That's how it comes with the program. We have the next section, which is clinical notes. It's very important that they learn to do clinical notes. Many offices are paperless, chartless, and they need to put their clinical notes into the program so they can be uh, read and reviewed and have access to and legally have access to for anything that may come up legally. All right, so we have our different tabs, progress notes and clinical notes. When I open clinical notes, it's just this big blank white. I'm going to scoot it up a little bit because I want to make sure you can see this. In the clinical notes, there's a few things here. First of all, you have this left-hand column. There's just this big white box and then the big center box. And to the right, clinical templates, which we're going to use today. This is the part that is critical on how you enter clinical notes. All right. Here is Mr. Sunshine or Golden Star in this new clinical note. I'm creating a clinical note today. Click. It puts the date and the time the, the note is going in. Okay. It says the dentist is putting the notes in or was seen by the dentist that the assistant is putting notes in. In this big box, lots of options here. Okay, one option is literally, I'm, there's little things here. You can sign a clinical note so it saves it forever and can't be changed. Um, I'm going to see, just here it says insert date and time, just so people get used to. I'm going to put the date and time, even though it's put in right here, um, just so it fills the box and you can see. So today's the date. Um, I can simply do this. Red health history, no changes, um, did pre-medic, oops, pre-medicate. Uh, by the way, there is spell check. You know, hilarious, half the words that dentists use, like, aren't in the spell check. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, um, it's going to populate in here whatever I type. There is one form of a clinical note. Okay? This is a much easier way than just typing the notes. Over to the right, you have these clinical notes. 
The good news is you can create your own custom clinical note, or we have some generic ones in here. Okay. We have some under administrative, anesthetics, some basic clinical notes, endodontics, and so on, all the way down. All right. Number one, we're going to use some of these little uh, clinical notes that are already in the system. I'm going to collapse them all. And then I'll show you how they can learn to make their own clinical note. Um, I think in a lot of offices, there's clinical notes the doctor likes to use. There's ones that the assistants like to use and some that the hygienists like to use. So it's okay to customize. I've seen some offices where the hygienist has her own notes and it will have her name and say Jamie's notes or it will be Karen's notes, however you'd like. Okay. First thing we're going to do is let's look at medical alerts. Already in here, health history updated, health history no changes, health history none. I'm going to do updated. Double click it. Beautiful. Before dental treatment, the patient was asked about changes to her medical history, such as recent surgery or changes in medication. The patient confirmed verbally that there have been changes um, in their medical. They have been recorded and put in the patient's chart. Guess what? I can add to it. No longer needs to pre-med. Oops. Right? You can add your notes to the clinical note that's already defaulted. All right. There's a note. I'm going to go down below so you can see another clinical note. Let's go to uh, restorative. Okay. Cemented crown. Now, again, these come with the program. You get to create your own. When I double-click it, it's going to give me series. Uh, which crown did I resubmit? Cement. Is it 14? Okay. What type of crown was it? Uh, how about resin with high noble? I use Reliox. The H. And I use Fuji. And what post-op did I give? It was verbal. Okay. That was an awful lot of steps. So let's make our own template, because I think each person should know how to make their own template that's going to work for them. By the way, when I go to hygiene, Profi does the same thing. Was it light? Was it fine scale? Was it, it goes through a lot of series. So across the top, there's a template setup. I'm going to click it. I'm going to make a new template. I'm going to put it under hygiene. I'm going to call it Lisa, whoops, Puffy. I literally am going to put a note in here. Uh, saw a patient today, light, scale, whoops. Um, Profi paste, uh, that's all I'll put. That's all I'm going to put. Okay. You know, a lot of them will put their full notes into one. I'll close it. Can you already see that in my categories, it's right there. Double click, and it put it in. Easy. I would recommend that maybe each, even instructor or student, learn how to put a custom uh, template in. Maybe if there's a standard way that they typically uh, do a resin filling, to put one in, call it resin filling, or a typical thing they do to do a crown prep and put that in there. Something they use every day for most patients. So they'll have a custom temp, uh, template so that they can pop it in. Regardless, there are custom ones or, or they can be literally written in. You can just handwrite any of your notes. By the way, let's say they saw the doctor today and the hygienist. I'm going to do a new clinical note. This time, see this little guy says change provider because the hygienist is going to put her notes in. 
The reason this is uh, pretty great is the dentist can look back at his own notes. The hygienist can look back at her own notes. So I'm just going to quickly put in my hygiene notes, and perhaps the medical alert, no changes. Done. Clinical notes, done. This is simply how you use it. It will save them automatically, or just to be sure you can always save your clinical notes. So now we have progress notes, lists, the treatment, and the treatment plan, clinical notes, or the actual clinical that was seen. All right, we have posted, we have done well, we have done the charting. The next thing we're going to do is the treatment planner. This is a part that the assistant is required to do to help the front office staff before the patient walks up to the front. There should be the treatment plan already in order. So the front office staff says, oh, it looks like you need this for first visit, this for second, and third. You probably didn't watch this, but this little chair is now green because there is a treatment plan on the patient. It was white. It was grayed out when I didn't have a treatment plan. Now I do, and that's why it's green. My treatment planner here. I'm just going to do this view so it's on the side. There are two different accesses to the treatment plan. Immediately, when a patient has any treatment plan, it will create, it'll simply say, treatment plan created on the day it was created. When I push the plus sign, here's all the treatment plan. There it is. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Now, when I'm looking at this treatment planner, I can still see the chart, I can still see the buttons, I can still see the procedure codes. I'm going to show you something that is different. This treatment planner, just remember again, is over to the side in a tab. There is a whole treatment plan in our system that literally also, we'll break down insurance benefits and how much they need to bring to visits. And that's the green chair. Will you lay down? The green chair, lay down. Let's talk about money. Just takes a minute for this to pull up because I wanted it to pull up after I had posted some treatment. Hmm. Okay. All right. Have a little delay there, but here we are. When we look at the treatment planner, again, it's that green chair. This will actually show the treatment to be done and a picture of the treatment to be done. This will look the same where you have the full list here, but this is the place where you want to print the treatment plan, where you want to set what the visits will be, what we're going to, what's first priority, second priority, and so on. All right, here we go. There's a bunch of tabs at the bottom that we're not going to uh, worry about. These will be set up by the office manager or their office that they're at. Just so you know, looking at these tabs, it does give you information. For this case, for all of my treatment, it is 16521 and the insurance is only going to pay about 446 because I had a root canal done today, too. These are just different little tabs that we will not concern ourselves. If you've been playing with the system and get a little lost, always go to the top where it says Treatment Plan Case Setup. All right, here's our treatment. Here we go. First of all, if I come in tomorrow and broke a tooth and have more treatment, it'll keep adding to my base treatment plan. It'll keep filtering in here. All right. Boy, I have a lot of things. For instance, I have these Empress crowns that I'm going to have on my front teeth. It's cosmetic. It's nothing that needs to be done. 
is something I may, if I win the lottery, I'm going to get them done. To make a new treatment plan case. There's this little, again, sunshine or bright star. If I click on it, I can name this veneers. This is still my basic treatment plan. This always will be. This is just a different folder that I can put other treatment into. So when I talk to a patient about a treatment plan, we'll only talk veneers. With that being said, let me show you if I highlight the veneer, I'm using my shift key just to highlight them all. Again, I can do one at a time. I'm going to click and drag to my veneers folder. Click, let go. Now, just a little thing like me changing that. Can you see this graphic picture? This graphic picture is only the veneers. If I'm sitting down and maybe they're laying in the chair, I can say, okay, just for your veneers, you can see these that are painted in red. This is the teeth that you'll have veneers. And right at the top here shows you how much it will be and how much your insurance or your, your portion will be. So in other words, you better win that lottery because it looks like it's going to be your portion. It's not talking about other treatment. You can simply just talk about veneers. All right. There was poor, poor me. I had a tooth that either needs an extraction and a bridge or a buildup and a crown. So with that being said, I'm going to make a new folder that says Sorry, okay, uh, bridge, that's going to be an option. That is going to be one option. So with the bridge, um, I believe that was down in the lower right. So let me see, the extraction number 19, I just click and drag. Now, after that extraction is done, I'm going to need that three unit bridge. So that's going to be, let's see, the Pontic, number 19, number 20, thinking, and I also need number 18 from, uh, because at one point it was also, it needed a crown. Anyway, I highlight it drag it in. All right. What we have here, my main treatment plan is written in blue. If I have more treatment needed to be done, it will add to my basic one. But I've created a veneers file. I've created a bridge file. 